Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at a thermal energy transfer problem. Basically what this means is we have a hot thing and a cold thing. We're going to mix them together. The hot thing is going to get cooler, the cold thing is going to get warmer, and they're going to reach a temperature somewhere in the middle of those two initial temperatures. In this type of problem we could be solving for one of several things. We could be solving for the mass of one of the substances, we could be solving for the specific heat of one of the substances, or we could be solving for either the starting temperature of one substance or the final temperature that the two substances reach after they're mixed. A lot of times this gets lumped in with calorimetry problems in general, but separate it out in your mind. This type of problem and this approach is only going to be used when we've got a hot thing and a cold thing, which is different than a regular calorimetry problem where we have a reaction. We're mixing two things that are at the same temperature and they react to either get warmer or colder than their starting temperatures. So that we'll call a calorimetry problem. This is a thermal energy transfer problem. So let's read the problem and jump in and solve this. It says a 20 gram block of aluminum metal is heated over a Bunsen burner flame, then dropped into a beaker containing 100 milliliters of water at room temperature of 20.5 degrees Celsius. So all the clues as to what type of problem this is are right there. We've got a, a hot thing, which is the aluminum metal that we've heated up over the burner. We drop into a beaker containing water, which is at room temperature. So that's the cold substance, the water and they're going to reach some temperature that's between those two temperatures. So here's how we set up this type of problem. It's going to start with MC delta T, M being the mass of the substance, C being the specific heat of that substance, and delta T being how much that temperature changes. So that's for one substance, that'll be for aluminum, and that's going to equal the opposite of the MC delta T of the other substance. Now this equation, mc delta t, or that term of the equation, represents the amount of energy that's gained or lost by one of the substances. For this problem, on the left here I'm going to have aluminum, and on the right I'm going to have water. And I've, I've written those in two different colors, in uh, gray for aluminum and blue for water, so it's a little bit easier to follow uh, my work here. So this mc delta t represents the amount of energy that aluminum is going to lose or give away during this uh, mixing. And then the water, this MC delta T right here, represents the amount of energy that the water is going to gain while these two things are mixing and coming to a, an equilibrium of temperature. Now if you notice, there's a negative sign here. The negative sign means that basically one temperature will increase, the other temperature will decrease, hence we have to have a negative sign to show that however much one is gaining, the other one is losing that same amount, hence the negative sign there. And of course they're equal because all of the energy of the aluminum will be transferred to the water. So the amount that the aluminum loses is equal to the amount that the water gains. So this is our starting equation and anytime we have a thermal energy transfer problem like this, this is what we'll start with. Now because in the problem it doesn't tell us the temperature changes, but it tells us a final and an initial and we'll actually have to solve for an initial here. Um, we're going to rewrite this as MC times final temperature minus initial temperature on both sides. Anytime you have delta T, you can write it as T final minus initial. And in more generally, anytime you have the change in a variable, whatever variable it is, you can write that as final state of that variable minus the initial state of that variable. So we rewrote the equations like that. Now on the left here, I'm going to draw a graphic to help us visualize what's happening here. Our aluminum is starting with an initial temperature that we don't know. Our water is starting with an initial temperature of 20.5 degrees Celsius. And then our aluminum is going to get colder, so that temperature is going to drop. The water will get warmer, so that temperature is going to increase. And they'll meet somewhere in the middle, but not right in the middle. Notice how this temperature, final temperature is closer to the water's initial temperature than the aluminum. Now that final temperature that they'll reach is 22.8 degrees Celsius, which is what the problem tells us. But how did I know, because I don't know the initial temperature of the aluminum, how did I know that the aluminum is going to change by a lot? and the water is going to change by a little bit. Well, there's two things that give that away. The first is that the water has more mass than the aluminum. So if the aluminum has less mass, it's going to take less energy to get it to change more degrees. The water has more mass, so it'll take a lot more energy to get it to change a few degrees. The second thing I can look at is the specific heat of each substance. If we look in the problem, water specific heat is 4.18, and the specific heat of aluminum is 0.9. And what this means is that it only takes 0.9 joules of energy to take one gram of the aluminum and change it by a degree. So it, it only takes 0.9 joules to change a gram by a degree for the aluminum. But water takes a lot more energy to get the same effect. To get one gram of water to change by one degree Celsius, instead of 0.9 joules, it takes a whole 
four joules of energy. That means it takes a lot more energy to change the temperature of the water, hence the water's temperature won't change as much as the aluminum. Probably know this if you think about metal in general, metal tends to have a low specific heat. It can change temperatures very rapidly. Metal can get hot very fast and it can get cold very fast because the specific heat is very small. It doesn't take much energy to get it hot or get it cold. So I know because of those two reasons that my change in temperature of aluminum is gonna be a lot compared to my change in temperature of the water. And I can verify that at the end once I solve for that initial temperature. The next, last thing that we have to do is start substituting in values that we know from the problem. So let's take a look at this. We've got a 20 gram block of aluminum metal. So that's gonna be my mass of the aluminum right here. And it's heated over a Bunsen burner flame, then dropped into a beaker containing 100 milliliters of water. Now, <clears throat> for my specific heat, I can find that in the problem. It tells me right here that that's 0.9 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then the next thing, um, that I need to look at is that it reaches a maximum temperature of 22.8. And it says the water's temperature reaches a maximum of 22.8, but remember the aluminum's temperature is gonna drop to that same final temperature that the water is gonna have. So I can use that for both sides of the equation. So 22.8 degrees Celsius is my final temperature. And my initial temperature, that's what I'm solving for, the initial temperature of aluminum right here. So I'm going to leave that as that variable T sub initial. Now on the right side of the equation, i got to bring down my negative sign, and I'm going to substitute in for water's variables. So the mass of the water is 100 grams, and it's 100 milliliters. The density of water is, 100, is 1 gram per milliliter, so 100 milliliters is 100 grams of water. The specific heat of water we already saw was 4.18, um, so we'll write that there, joules per gram degree Celsius. And then our water's temperatures, it starts at a temperature of 20.5, it's going to reach a temperature of 22.8. So we'll take that final minus initial, so 22.8 minus 20.5 degrees Celsius. Now, in a lot of problems we do in AP Chemistry, we have to convert Celsius to Kelvin, but we don't here. And the reason why is we're really not multiplying by a temperature. We're multiplying by a change in temperature. So if we converted both of these values to Kelvin, the change in temperature is still going to be the same number of degrees or the same um, number of Kelvins. So in this case, we can leave it in degrees Celsius, but only because we're looking at change in temperature. If we were looking at absolute temperature in some other equation, we'd have to convert to Kelvin. All right, so we're going to solve for our T initial here. So when I multiply 20 times 0.9 times 22.8, I got 410.4. And when I multiply 20 times 0.9, I get 18 times negative TI, so I get minus 18 T initial equals negative 961.4. I'm gonna skip the steps for solving for T initial here and assume that you can do that on your own. But whenever we do that, um, we get 76.2 degrees Celsius for our initial temperature of the aluminum. Now I can take a look back at the, the problem right here and say, okay, well I said that the change in temperature of the aluminum would be much greater than the change of temperature of the water. And I can see that's true. If I'm starting with 76.2, it goes down to 22, it changed by about 50 degrees, whereas the water changed by about a degree, a little bit more than a degree. And so the water didn't change temperature by a whole lot. The aluminum changed temperature by a lot, and we solved for that final temperature of 76.2 degrees Celsius. Now, if we were solving for a different variable, our setup would still be exactly the same. We would just be solving for something else in the equation. And again, this was a thermal energy transfer problem, meaning we have a hot thing and a cold thing, and we mix them together. In a separate video, we'll look at a calorimetry problem where we have a reaction. We've got two substances mixed together, and they're going to either get hotter if it's an exothermic reaction or colder if it's an endothermic reaction. But that'll be a separate thing and a separate setup than this one was. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.